Okay, the other day I made a video about rejuvenating an old car battery. In that video I showed me take an old battery, pour the acid into a plastic container, and then rinse the battery out with distilled water a few times and put the old acid back in it, topped it off with a little bit of distilled water, and charged it up and it worked. Now, there's a lot of other stuff that can happen to a battery and it still not work even after you do that. You know, you got bad cells, a number of things. Now, there was other stuff I could have done in that video. I could have used some new acid you get from the parts store. You can ask parts stores what goes in there. Again, you don't want to mix it with your old acid. So even if you don't have enough to quite fill it up, top it off with distilled water the same way. But don't mix acids. But if you do that, you'll need to neutralize your battery first. Pour your old acid out. Take some baking soda, about half a cup to a gallon of water, rinse it out with that a few times, then rinse it out with the distilled water to get the baking soda out, then put your new acid in and go from there. Now, what this video is about is other problems that you may run up on in your car battery issues. Now, this is basically a lawnmower battery, and uh, it's not even an acid battery, it's a gel top battery, but it's representing, for the sake of this video, it's representing a car battery that's a regular old acid battery like you traditionally would find. If you look at your battery and the sides are swollen out, which this one's not, but if, if you see them poking out, they don't have to be real swollen out, they just kind of have an overly looking outward um, stance about them. That's not a good sign. That, that's a sign that your electrical system is overcharging. You, you probably need to have your alternator looked at, your regulator looked at anyway. And uh, it's overcharging your battery, which is building up too much gas in the battery, which is why it swelled up. So even if your battery is working good, you're probably better off to get that battery out of there. Get somebody to get it out of there for you if you want to. But get it out and get you a new one and have your electrical system checked out. Because, you know, you could end up having a battery uh, give you a bad day, if you will. So, get that battery out of there. If you look under your hood and you see a lot of rust around your battery compartment, but you don't have an old rusty car, then you probably have a leaking battery. Again, it could be leaking out the top from overcharging and your battery is not swelled up. But it can show that your electrical system again is overcharging your battery, which isn't good. But you could also have a crack in your battery that can crack on the side. You know, you could have hit a, hit something real hard and it jarred it too much and something managed to poke it. Somebody could have slammed the battery down in there when they was putting it in there and cracked the bottom of it. There could have been some little chunk of rust under something under it that slowly worked around and made a hole in the bottom of it. Lots of things can cause a crack in your battery. Now you'll see people talk about patching batteries. Yeah, it's better off not to patch a battery. It can be done, but you're better off not to be doing that. Just get a new battery. Now, I could have made a whole video on patching batteries, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so if your battery has a crack in it, get rid of it. If it's swelled up, get rid of it. If uh, you notice that one of the chambers in it is real low on fluid, a lot of batteries you can see through the side if they're, they're murky, white, or... or or off looking, you can see the acid in it. I diminished that batteries in my other video. I could see the level of the acid looking to the side. If you've got one that's real low, there's a reason why that one chamber is low. And it probably isn't a good reason. So you might be better off just to get a new battery there too. Now, you hear about some old timers taking and putting new cells in battery when they go bad. And that can be done. You know, they'd lift the top off and take a cell out of another battery that knew that cell was good and then put it in there and mix two batteries and have a good one. Now again, that's not worth the hassle either. It can be done, but of course they have to be, you know, mighty similar. You just will say exact, but mighty similar type cells and you have to know what you're doing and all that to do it. It can be done, but I don't suggest it. But hey, that's up to you. Now, if you wonder if your battery is holding a charge or not. I've seen people in the old days, they'd take a piece of metal, this is metal right here, and they'd jump it across the negative and positive and see if it sparked. Well, that'll tell you if it's charged or not. Of course, it also could end up with a bad day for you, and you could have just damaged your battery doing it. So if you don't have a tester like this to test it, 
just find you an old like 12 volt bulb that you would have, you know, like a tail light in a car, so to speak. They can put the negative and positive across there. And it don't even matter which way you do it on that, since it's just sitting out there loose, it's not in your car. Um, and it'll light up if it's got power in it. Of course, I still don't tell you how many amps it has and stuff. It don't tell you the backbone power. And, uh, which leads me to this. You can buy a cheap battery. You know, there's lots of stores that sell batteries for well under $100. But I don't suggest that. You know, if if it's between wondering how you're going to fix the battery and buying a new one, yeah, buy a cheap one. But if you can, buy a battery that has higher cranking amps. You may pay more for it, but in the long run, you're actually saving yourself money. You think, well, how am I doing that? I'm paying more for the battery. Well, the battery's going to last you longer, you know, under more strict conditions, colder weather, so on and so forth. But it's going to give your car better power. And that's the key. It gives your car better power. So you're less likely to have sensors go out, your computer in your car go out, so on and so forth. And there again, there's the big one. On a cold, cold day, you're more likely to have that car crank. So you're saving yourself money to buy a better battery. So find out the rating of what your car's amperage levels are, what it can take, and get towards the top of that. And you'll, you'll save yourself some headache. So people... In that video, they wanted to know about load tests and all that. Well, that wasn't about load testing, so on and so forth. It was just about an old school trick of rejuvenating a car battery. The best load test is to get out there and try it. You know, drive it around for a few days, see how it cranks after it's set overnight, you know, cold night particularly. And that's how you'll know. You know, you can carry some jumper cables with you just in case, but that's the best way to know. It's just real life circumstances because that's where you're going to be using it anyway anyway i hope this helps thank you